Hello kids, welcome back to part two of Sculptures. So in part one, do you remember what we talked about? What kind of material were we talking about? We were talking about stone and we saw some sculptures from Egypt. Well, another material, a different material that sculptors use is wood from trees. Namu, right? They use wood. Some sculptors work with wood. Some make big sculptures. Others make small sculptures. Look at this woman here. What is the material she is using? She is using wood. And is it a big sculpture or a small sculpture? Of course, we can see it is a big sculpture. Look at the sculpture. What is the sculpture? It looks like somebody's head. This head is bigger than the woman, right? Much bigger than the woman's head. So this sculpture might be very big, right? She is using, what is she using? Remember the tools we talked about in part one? She is using a chisel and a hammer. A chisel and a hammer. A chisel and a hammer. And she uses these tools to shape the wood. Look at this picture. What do you see? You see a dog, and you see a bird standing on the dog. What is the material made or used to make these sculptures? What is the material? Is it stone? Is it clay? Or is it wood? If we look closely, we can see it's wood because we can see the texture. We can see, ah, that's wood. But look, there's something interesting. Is it all one color? Wood is usually brown. This part is brown. But what color is this? What other colors do you see? What other colors are there? We can see blue, two different kinds of blue. We can see purple. Purple is similar to blue. We can see red and orange. So we see many different colors. How did those colors get there? Those colors are made by paint. Okay? Sometimes wooden sculptures are painted. So we can paint wood easily. And we can paint wooden sculptures. So they've painted the dog and they painted the bird. This sculpture is a kind of art from a certain place or a certain culture. Here it says Native American sculpture. What does Native American mean? You know American, miguk saram, right? I am a miguk saram. I am an American. But what is Native American? Native? Native means a person who lived in America for a long, long time before Europeans came to America. Well, you can also say American Indians. But usually it's better to say Native American. They are the people who lived in America for thousands of years before the Europeans came. And they had their own style, their own type of art. This is Native American sculpture. Okay. So we saw wood. First we saw stone in part one. We just talked about wood. But remember, we talked about clay on the cover of the book. Clay is another material. Clay is another material sculptors use to make 
sculptures. Let's read. Some sculptors work with clay. They shape the clay when it is soft and damp. Damp? What does that mean? What is damp? Damp means it has some water in it. Clay is like mud. Mud bistandeo, right? Mud bistandeo. Whoa, <laughs> okay. Uh, clay is like mud. If you go to a river or a lake and you put your hands in the ground, sometimes you can take up pieces of the ground and it's sticky. Right? It sticks together. That's clay. There's a lot of water in it. If you take the clay and you push it and you mold it, you get some of the water out. Not all of the water. You keep some water in. It's still damp. Some water. Right? A little water is in the clay. If all the water is gone, the clay becomes hard and it's, you can't shape it. But when it's damp, some water, you can push it and you can shape it into a sculpture. Look at this woman. What is she making? She's making a sculpture of a woman's head. It's very beautiful. She is very good at making sculptures. She is a good sculptor. Now these clay structures or these clay sculptures are life size. Life size, if you look at these sculptures, they are the same size as me. They are sculptures of men. If these sculptures are the same size as me or you, then they are life size. The same size as in life. Not smaller than life, not bigger than life, but life sized. The same size as real people or real things. Thousands, thousands were buried with a Chinese emperor. Maybe you heard about these statues before. They were buried with a Chinese emperor. The emperor died more than 2,000 years ago. But they're made of clay. How did they last for 2,000 years? Before we saw uh, statues from Egypt that have been uh, Okay, for 3,000 years, but they're made of stone. Clay is not as hard as stone. It's weaker. How did these sculptures remain in good condition? They were buried, right? They were buried. That means underground. Dirt was put on top of them. The dirt protected these sculptures. So when they took the dirt up, they could see the sculptures. But now they have to be careful because the air is hurting these statues. So that's interesting. But there are thousands of statues like this. Okay, here is a picture of all the statues that were buried with Emperor Jin Shi Huang. Probably you remember his name. Look at all of the statues, thousands of statues, and they are all life size. But they are made of clay, so they have to be careful. Look at the picture here. Oh no, all of these statues were destroyed. Why? Maybe because they weren't careful digging them up, or maybe because the air is damaging them. So some statues, they're putting the earth back onto them to protect the statues and keep them safe. But this is a famous example 
of clay statues. So we've seen different types of material to make statues. We've seen stone, we've seen wood, and now we've seen clay. Is there any other material we can use? Well, that's in part three. We'll study that in part three of sculptures. I'll see you then.